Welcome to episode 77 of On The Ledger. My name is Ian Rogers. I'm the Chief Experience Officer here at Ledger, and I'm joined today by Ledger's CEO, Pascal Gauthier, and our Chief Technology Officer, Charles Guillemet. Thanks for joining us, guys. We are here on the eve of the introduction of Ledger Recover. We announced that Ledger, was, Ledger Recover was coming earlier in the year, and it's actually here and to be released to our customers. So we're, today we're going to talk about exactly what it is, who it's for, and for anyone who would like more details on exactly how it works. We've done a lot of work over this summer to give you a lot of details on that. So we're going to, we're going to go through it. Um, Pascal, you know, first of all, I mean, I guess I'll just lay out there exactly what, what Ledger Recover is, what the offering is for our customers. It is an opt-in. In other words, if you don't want it, you don't need to use it. But if you do want it, it will actually be a four pay product uh, for around $10 a month. And what it offers to the customer is backup of your uh, of your recovery phrase. So in the case that you lose your device um, and you need access, you know, you want to you want to bring your private key back onto a new ledger. Um, you're able to do that. You use your identification, your government identification to identify yourself and then uh, you do that when you back up your, your seed and then you do it again twice to recover your seed. And we'll talk more about exactly how that works later. Um, but it, it really solves a problem that we hear about from customers every single day. Every single day we hear from customers who have one way or another lost their recovery phrase, lost access to their, to their device. Um, and they're stuck. You know, I was going back and forth with a friend of a friend just this week who he was moving home and he had his ledger and his recovery phrase both in the vehicle. Um, his vehicle was broken into, everything was stolen. The thief in this case doesn't even know what he or she has because the money has not moved from the accounts. But unfortunately, this individual has access to neither their ledger nor their recovery phrase, so they can't retrieve the funds. And if they had ledger recover, they'd be able to go through the recovery process with a new nano and boom, they'd, they'd, they'd have their accounts back. So just as a, as a quick overview for the audience as to what the product is and how it works, that's that. Um, Pascal, anything I forgot in the description and why do you think this is important for ledger at this moment? I think the description was good. I think why it's important for uh, not just Ledger, but you know, self-custody is that if you look at the, uh, the way that it's done today, um, self-custody and decentralization is not the main piece of the market. Actually, most users are keeping their funds on exchanges. And we all know uh, this is probably not the best way to, to keep your coins. The rest of users that are in self-custody, uh, often they use sort of software wallets or hardware wallets, and the seed recovery mechanism is actually pretty bad. Either you store your seed in a cloud, which is the advice that you get from some, which we believe is dangerous and you shouldn't do it. Uh, and then you can keep your 24 words on a, on a piece of paper, on a metal plate, etc. Like you have all these... Uh, I'm not even going to call it technology. You have all these ways of keeping your 24 words that are very medieval. Uh, and I don't think this is future-proof. I don't think uh, this is how you can scale uh, self-custody. Just few numbers that I think are interesting. There are 106 or 107 million Ethereum addresses. 100 million of these have less than $160. So it's really the market is really concentrated on you know, six to seven million addresses. So that tells you a little bit about like the self-custody market today and, and what it is. Because we often hear like 500 million users uh, in crypto, but these are not 500 million users that actually hold their private keys. Because if it was so, then Ledger would have sold much more devices. Uh, and so the real, the real market of you know, uh, people that hold their private keys is probably sub 10 million users today on the planet for value. Uh, that is above $160. Uh, and of course, under, under $160, that's not a market for Ledger. And also, you know, uh, you probably care less about security, recovery, etc., because it's, 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 it's not a lot of money. Um, 
at least for you know Europe and, and the US and, and and the kind of countries where uh, where we, we we sell our products basically, uh, but above one hundred and sixty dollars, this is this is where you need uh, you need security, and there's only six to seven million people. So, at Ledger, our eyes are not uh, looking at now; they're looking at the future. We're not. Uh, uh, you know, when Gretzky was saying, like, you know, I'm the greatest in uh, hockey, uh, not because uh, I was where the puck was, but I was where the puck was going to be. Uh, and I think in business is the same. You need to know where the market is going. And if you want, you know, uh, to go from six, seven million today or 10 million today of people that have more than $160 in value in cryptocurrency, basically to 100 million, 200 million, 300 million, you need to do better with uh, this this private key issue and the, the 24 word issue like there's no way that with that 100 million people will keep the 24 words on a piece of paper or and or upload it in the cloud and or stay on exchanges because again uh if you don't hold your private keys then again why crypto uh you know holding your private keys and having your digital assets is your freedom and that's why crypto exists it's an edge towards uh, a very centralized system and so if crypto is centralized then i don't think uh, crypto really exists, uh, and so decentralization is key. Self custody is key, uh, and uh, and the fact that we solve for the onboarding of crypto and an onboarding of self custody, where the twenty four words has been a pain point since this market exists. I think this is what we're trying to do here. So Ledger Recover is built in partnership with a company called Coin Cover, uh, who does the identification of the the user and also is a part of the technology solution that we'll talk about with Charles in, in a moment. They also offer uh, up to $50,000 in coverage in the case that your seed is returned to the wrong person. So that $50,000, I think, is an important thing for consumers to, to think about when they're thinking about if the service is right for them. Um, you mentioned that the vast majority of wallets out there have um, a relatively small amount of money on them. So I think when we're looking at that kind of four to 500 million number that's reported, Pascal, the majority of that um, of that of those accounts are um, or those people who are who are you know have exposure to crypto are on exchanges, um, so they're not in self custody, and they also have less than fifty thousand um, dollars of, of of value. What, what when you think about it, Pascal, who who do you think um, Ledger Recover is for uh, exactly? Who's the who's the target customer in your mind? Uh, so number one customer will be me. <laughs> I've been waiting for this service for for a long time because. I had like several incidents with different devices, different 24 words, etc. Like, you know, it's, uh, I don't think it's very easy to, to keep it in a, in a, in a paper form and, uh, and have a, a, a real safe, like a, at a bank, uh, that actually cost me much more than 9.99 a month to, to keep my seed. Uh, and so, I was waiting for a digital form of the safe that I have at the bank to protect my seed, basically. Uh, and I think just like me, a lot of our current users will use the product. I was, uh, I'm currently in Dubai, and last night I was having yet another discussion of yet someone else that had an issue with their seed, etc. And so, you know, and and that were uh, a person that is uh, a happy Ledger customer. So, on the current uh, customer base that we have, I think it's. Uh, it's a service that a lot of people are expecting, and you know we. Uh, I've been in this business since 2014. Ledger has been here since 2014. We have a great customer success team, and you know we we get the feedback from customers, uh, what they want, and also you know uh, sometimes what they lost. Uh, and we know that you know keeping those 24 words safe, in a way that you can always recover the 24 words, is something that is absolutely needed. So I think on our current customer base. This is one. And also, this is uh, to expand the market. There are a lot of people that stay on exchanges because they just don't trust themselves with self-custody and don't trust themselves with those 24 words. Again, that's a, that's a very common uh, feedback that we get. Uh, and either we get it through surveys that we do, and you know, this is always what the voice of the customer says, and or very randomly, like, you know, I talked to so many people that made exactly that comment. So like, well, you know, my coins are on exchanges. I understand. It's a problem, but also I don't trust myself with self custody and uh, and the safekeeping of this twenty four words. So, I think what we're trying to do, really, again back to my first point with these kind of services, is you know service better our existing customers for those who need the service. Again, it's completely optional. Like you know, there is no if you don't want to use it, don't use it, and it doesn't 
change your ledger life. Uh, but to onboard new users in self-custody uh, and for users to be able to trust themselves, I think it's a, it's a very, very important service. Charles, I joined the company in January of 2021. And one of the very first things I saw, the ver my very first week on the job, was a hackathon presentation um, that, that was basically Ledger Recover. It was the project that became Ledger Recover. So that is getting really close to three years ago now. So this has been a, a pretty long road. Can you, can you tell us a little bit about um, you know, how we got here and how Ledger Recover works? Yeah, sure. Uh, this, is, this is the difference you have between a hackathon and a real product. Sometimes I love hackathon because this is the opportunity to have new ID and test them with, uh, with technology and so on. Uh, but when you build a product, then this is a completely different story. You, are, you have to think about everything, security, scalability, UX. Like this is something uh, completely different. And the way it works for a user, so for now it's only available for the nano X. So the way it works is the following. Uh, you, you have a, a nano X, you onboard of, on your device, and then you will create an account uh, with the Ledger Recover uh, solution. So you will need an email, you will give your, your email. Uh, um, a specific magic link will be uh, sent to your email so that you can create your account within Ledger Recover. Um, then you will have uh, to enter your uh, information, uh, who you are, uh, your ID card, you, you will um, provide your, uh, your ID card. Uh, you will also have to provide your uh, banking card uh, because uh, it's a paying service. And then uh, you will go through an identification process uh, with a partner con called uh, OnFilo. Uh, and then with your phone, uh, you uh, will go through this identity uh, verification process uh, so that your image, your face is, uh, is scanned uh, to OnFilo. Uh, to so this... let me, uh, sorry, let me, let me pause for just one second and, and remind people what I said at the top, what Pascal said in the middle and what you just said as well, because I know that, that there'll be, you know, many people who are ledger users who say i'm not comfortable with submitting my identification i'm not comfortable with submitting my credit card um and, and i think it's important to acknowledge that we support that if you're not comfortable with those things please don't opt into this product this product isn't for you as pascal said there are many people um, who are comfortable with that and would like this product because um, they would like to have a backup of the recovery phrase but if i'm one of those people that says i absolutely don't want this um, you know, what, what, what changes for me? Yeah, so if you are one of these people, and I'm one of them, uh, I will be completely uh, transparent with uh, our listeners. Uh, the, the thing you have to do is nothing. You just do nothing and nothing will happen. So this is, a, this is very simple and we, we need to say it again and again. It's not a product for me for various reasons. Uh, first of all, I don't really like this uh, identification process. Uh, there's a KYC, it's not a KYC, but uh, I, if I can avoid uh, identification in KYC, I, I will do it. Uh, and it's always the case. And secondly, like uh, uh, managing private keys, this is, uh, this is my lifetime uh, activity. So this is, I have my um, own OPSEC and so on, and, and I, I don't really need uh, such product. But for my mother, for Pascal, for anyone who, has, who is not at ease or who wants a such backup, it's, it's a very, very good product. But if you don't like the product, it's simple. You don't, you don't have to do not, you, anything. Like, uh, I, I you, appreciate that point of view. I'm glad, to, glad that we have the opportunity to share that with the audience because I think it's, uh, it's, it's honest and true. And so continue with the description of how it works technically. So you have an account, you have shared your uh, credit card details, uh, then you have shared your identity, uh, identity details uh, with your uh, ID card and uh, or passport and your face that is uh, scanned uh, through uh, on, Fido, uh, on Fido application. And then at this point, you are a user in the system and then your seed uh, will be split uh, into different shards and will be sent over a secure channel to a different HSM. HSM uh, stands for Hardware Security Module. So this is, this is um, a piece of hardware which, we, which is uh, definitely designed for a security purpose. And, uh, and this is what we are using uh, for, um, for Ledger Recover. And then, so from your uh, device, uh, you will be prompted 
A, uh, you are Charles, yes. Do you uh, want to initiate uh, the backup process of your seed? Yes. And then a secure channel will be uh, mounted from the device to this three HSM, so three independent secure channels. And then your seed will be splitted um, following uh, Shamir secret sharing um, um, process and all each shard will be sent over the secure channel to uh, each uh, each of the HSM. And at this point, each like all the three HSM has uh, one each HSM has one shard, and um, and uh, and you have finished your backup. And whenever you need to recover because uh, you have lost uh, your uh, 24 words or because uh, your uh, device uh, has been wiped, you have lost every, everything and you need to recover your uh, wallet. So what you will do is to connect to a Ledger Recover application uh, with your uh, password and, and your account. And at this point, you will go through the recover process and this recovery process consists in proving you are you, uh, you, 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 the one you pretend to be. And to do so, uh, you go through uh, two independent identi identity verification process uh, showing your uh, identity card uh, or your passport and uh, proving uh, you are who you pretend to be uh, with uh, the, the face scan. And you, you will do uh, two different face scans for releasing two different shards and these shards will be sent over a secure channel to your device and then you will recover access to your wallet. So this is uh, the comprehensive version of how it works. And I, I can confirm that it works as, as, a, uh, as, a, as a tester who, um, who opted in to Ledger Recover, went through the payment flow, uh, uploaded my identity. I then you know, typed my password into my device wrong three times uh, you know, bringing it back to its its factory state, and then went through the recovery process, and then boom, I was back up and running uh, with the, with the same with the same keys. So it's it is it is a pretty magical moment, you know, when you when you see that happen. Um, I mean, Charles, you know, I I know you to be a self custody maximist maximalist, uh, security maximalist, and a privacy maximalist, right? Um, so I, I think that I think our audience knows you to be that as well. What is it that makes you comfortable about this service and, and even proud of this service, which, which you and your team have built for Pascal, for your mom and for Ledger users? So in terms of security, we are, we are using really a state-of-the-art um, cryptographic algorithm. Like everything is, uh, is really state-of-the-art. By the way, we have shared uh, all the, the implementation details on how it works. It's been reviewed by uh, several uh, cryptographers, and I think we are uh, we are proud of what we built. So the cryptographic protocol. Uh, secondly, the cryptography is always implemented within hardware, secure hardware, like on the device itself in the secure element and on on the HSM uh, on the other side. So from a security standpoint, this is really the highest level of security uh, that you can find. So this is a, a really state of the art. Um, considering the, the PII, so your passport and so on, all of this is also encrypted using a hardware security module. So uh, uh, again, we are using the, the same kind of uh, technology. And, uh, and finally, in order to avoid single, single point of failure, uh, we are um, distributing the secret uh, to uh, three different HSM so that um, if ever uh, one would be compromised, it wouldn't give any information uh, on the data. Uh, and also we have some kind of redundancy, uh, like uh, the, the secret sharing is a two out of three. So that means that if ever one HSM would be wiped or something like this, uh, we still have a way to uh, recover uh, the, the wallets because it's two out of three. Only two shards are necessary to, um, to recover the wallet. And the third one is, is mostly a redundancy just in case one of the two uh, would, uh, would be wiped or there would, would be a problem. And I want to um, reiterate what you said about the information being out there. When, we, when, when the service was first announced earlier in the year, um, there was concern over, over what we were doing. I think people, first of all, just didn't really understand um, exactly how, uh, you know, how hardware wallets work. And, and, and that was an opportunity for us to, 
to, to do a lot of education on that topic, but also you've done a lot of um, work getting all of the details out there on exactly how Ledger Recover works. So I encourage anyone who wants to learn more to dive into that. I think in many ways it actually shows the best of what Ledger does. Um, it's been heavily peer reviewed at this point. Um, if I'm not mistaken, there's a white paper, there is source code. Um, you and the team used the opportunity to, um, to also open source um, more of the code, uh, which, is, which was, I would say, on the to-do list, but um, accelerated to, to, to meet the demand for that. Um, and, and, and also there are a series of, I believe, six blog posts that, you know, for anyone who's willing to put the time in to get their head around it, in other words, you don't need to be a cryptographer um, to understand at a high level how it works, you know, the, 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 those things lay out. So you've got technical detail, code, um, you know, slightly higher level and maybe um, more every person uh, detail. So there's a lot out there and it's been pretty heavily peer reviewed at this point. Any, any particular feedback um, that you got during, during the summer that, uh, that, that, that's worth, worth noting? I think you, you did a pretty good summary. Uh, so the concern uh, raised by the community was um, were uh, legitimate because the information was not out there. So we worked a lot on uh, providing all this information and uh, we published the, um, the white paper, which is a very long version of uh, the protocol. And if ever you want to build your own uh, recover uh, product, uh, this is like technically possible. You you read the ledger recover uh, white paper, and you could be um, a, a sharp provider. Like uh, you could implement your own HSM and so on. This is technically uh, possible. Not easy at all, but uh, technically uh, technically possible. Uh, we also released um, a big uh, a big part of the of the code that implement ledger recover on the device, so that people can audit audit it and so on and. We didn't have much um, feedback on that. On the white paper, we, I had a few uh, interesting uh, feedback. As mo most, of, most of them were, were like, we think it, it's pretty good. We, we agree with your choice and so on. But there, there, were, there were a few um, like inputs that were valuable and that we implemented in the meantime. When I won't go into the details because it's very, very technical. Um, and finally, uh, yes, we published a blog post where we are uh, addressing most of the questions and, uh, and we, I don't think we got m much feedback. And in this, case, in this kind of situation, when you don't uh, get feedback, it's, uh, it's a good sign. Well, definitely with the people that I talk to, there's excitement for the product. I think that there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of recognition, as Pascal said earlier, that there are, there are many people... Um, in fact, the vast, vast, vast majority of, of crypto owners are not in self-custody, and this exact problem is a real barrier, and, you know, you've built a technical solution. I guess the, the, the last question I have, um, and I, I think for you, Charles, technically, and for you, Pascal, um, philosophically, you know, we, we are, you know, as Pascal said earlier, you know, all of us believe, if not self-custody, why crypto? Um, so what, what's your view of the self-custody of, uh, of this particular solution or how do you contextualize this solution um, or, you know, relative to self-custody? Yeah, it's, it's a good one. And I, I think I, like permissionless money is really uh, the value proposition of crypto, like uh, being in control, um, having a way to like uh, being completely censorship resistant. No one can prevent you to own your money own your money, your value, and to be able to transact it. So I, this is something really important. And the solution uh, we designed, uh, we wanted to respect uh, self-custody, to ensure self-custody. As a user, when you use a Ledger Recover, you are still in control. You are the only one able to make transactions. You are the only one to own your value. And um, you still uh, have the knowledge of your 24 words. If you want to continue managing your 24 words, uh, you can. But you have a backup. And this backup is just in case. Um, just in case you lose access to your wallet, then uh, you have this, uh, this uh, possibility, this opportunity to recover your, uh, your wallet. You have a joker, basically. And on, on the partner side, uh, no one has access to your keys. You still are the only one uh, with uh, access to your wallet. So from a, from a tech standpoint, you are, you are still in self-custody. And Pascal, the importance to, to, to self-custody, you touched on it a bit earlier, but I, I, I like the philosophical point. I'm curious your take. 
No, I think uh, I think what was important is to see that you have two categories of users uh, and and how they're different. You know, so you know me and Charles' mom, I think, on one bucket, and to Charles and and other people on the other bucket. What was interesting in Charles' feedback, from from my point of view, is not so much the philosophical approach of I don't want to share my ID, etc. It's more like you know technically Charles is very savvy, and so he knows how to handle these things probably better than anyone else and the market needs to recognize and, and people need to understand that you know the, when the market is formed is formed that by, by the you know more technical people uh, on the planet like the people that got in in 2008 2009 2011 and have been managing their private keys since then you know they are probably like the la creme de la creme when it comes to you know sort of managing private keys etc and so they look at the service and they're like you know why i don't need it like typically charles like doesn't need it. That's that's why he's not going to use it because he's got other ways of dealing with his private keys that makes him feel comfortable. And like he says, like you know, managing private keys that that's his job. So he is the exception that confirmed the rule because when the market becomes big, most people are not very technical. Uh, and if you remember the the web of you know of the nineties uh, versus the web of the twenty twenty, the web of the nineties was much more technical. I mean, using the web was actually difficult. Uh, most people didn't know how to use it. It was you know, difficult to use a computer, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and so I think we, we're going through through the same, same phase now. Um, I will now second uh, everything Charles said uh, in terms of uh, to respect the self-custody philosophy. You know, this is, this, is, uh, this is not crippling your ability to manage your own money, to, to own your money. Like everything is yours. Only you can recover. And to talk about the elephants in the room, like, you know, some people say, well, you know, once you add your identity to recovery, then eventually it's a way to find you, et cetera, et cetera. So again, you know, if you are concerned with these kind of things, then, uh, then you shouldn't use the product. And again, it doesn't change anything. You know, the product only works if you opt in and if you press on the buttons. Only you are in control of what's happening with your device and, and the shard of the key, etc. So it's only if you initiate the process. It's not a process by, de by default. And so therefore, whatever makes you uncomfortable with, 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 with the product, you shouldn't use it. And that's perfectly fine. And life continues the same way it is. Uh, but let's face it, you know, most people that are in crypto have KYC themselves on an exchange, have uh, sent their coin from the exchange to the ledger. So therefore, their identity is already attached to to you know, to the flow of coins, like you know, and uh, and let's remember that you know, Bitcoin is anonymous, but it's traceable, uh, which is why you know, it's not the best public ledger to use if you're a criminal. It's not the best public ledger if you're in you know, dark activities, uh, and so therefore you know, uh, it's, it's it is very transparent. So uh, your identity is probably already attached to to, to your coins, you know. Uh, and that's a, that's a fact of being in crypto, unless you bought your crypto ages ago and, and, and maybe not. But, but most of people that onboard in, you know, onboarded after 17, you know, in, in this bull run and the next after have attached identity to the crypto. So I think sometimes um, the people that made uh, those comments are very technical and very early in the game. And so therefore, you know, they represent the early ethos of crypto. And their point is valid, but the problem is the next 100, 200 million people is never going to do uh, what the early community did because A, they're not technical enough, and B, they don't have exactly the same ethos. I mean, most people in our societies attach their name to their money. It's the way it works. Most people declare their taxes. And uh, if you're in most countries, you need to declare uh, your Bitcoins, you need to declare your capital gain, et cetera, et cetera. So, you know, uh, and that's what most people do. Uh, so I think what we're trying uh, with this product is to, to build a service that most people can use, but then make it still uh, possible for, you know, the people that don't want to use it to absolutely uh, stay uh, free of it. And, and by the way, like, you know, this, is, this has been our philosophy from the beginning. You know, we always develop the product for these two categories. On the one side, there are developers, and on the other side, there is the grand public, as we say in France, but like the mass. Uh, and for developers, we have like a, a bunch of tools. We have uh, we have a lot of developer tools, but we also have privacy features and uh, and freedom features that we've implemented, uh, and a lot of very advanced features when it comes to Bitcoin with Miniscript, for example. 
And so we are catering a lot for, for that audience. Uh, one thing that is worth saying is not a lot of people use these features. And so actually the audience uh, of people that are very advanced and I know Bitcoin more than others, it's a few thousand people on the planet. Uh, that's, that's what the audience is. Those people are very savvy, sometimes very vocal, uh, but it's a few thousand people. And so when you think about building a company uh, and we think when you think about taking uh, self-custody to, to the mass market, you, you need to have a strategy for the mass market. Uh, and you try to respect the two categories of users, developer on one side, mass market on the other. This is what we, we're trying to do. It's not an easy job every day, uh, but we are trying our best there. And Charles, for, for someone um, on the other side who is maybe less trustful and says, okay, I don't want this feature, but how do I know this doesn't affect my, uh, you know, my ledger, uh, my security with ledger? H how do you answer that question to them? So there are the, the list of blog posts that give plenty of details uh, explaining this. Um, but and again, we have provided a lot of uh, source code that allow any technical guy to audit it and to understand that it does not, doesn't change anything in terms of uh, threat model and so on. Uh, but to conclude, I, I think like something which is really important to have in mind when you use a wallet in general, if in your threat model, the wallet provider is the enemy, is the attacker, there is no way for you to be safe. Like if the wallet provider is your uh, is the attacker, you are doomed simply because there are always uh, trust op uh, trust uh, assumption when you use uh, a wallet, what whatever wallet you uh, you use. And if you really want to avoid this kind of thing, you enter into uh, something very complex where you will need to uh, use like multisig, on-chain multisig with different providers so that you have uh, different uh, trust assumption. This is possible, uh, but really more complex. Uh, and I, if you're not very tech savvy, uh, I definitely don't recommend doing this because there are more chance that you will lock uh, your funds than uh, you, you will secure anything doing this. Well, and I, I hear you. And it's also, you know, on some level, you especially if, if you're not the person who can who can audit the source code, then you you have to have a degree of trust somewhere. Um, you know, I, I, you know, I do have a degree in computer science, but I'm not a cryptographer. So I do trust you, Charles, um, just like, uh, well, no, and it's a different way. But I think I like to trust an expert. I was going to use the example of going to a sushi restaurant and ordering omakase. Right. You know, I mean, when you're in a whatever the context you're in. Uh, it pays to, to, to trust the experts. So thank you. I appreciate us addressing it. Thank you guys so much for doing this. Pascal, I'm not going to let you go just yet, though, because since we have you and we don't have you on the podcast often enough, you've been all over the world in the past three, four months. You've, you've been in Asia. You've been in the Middle East. You've been in, in the U.S. Give us your, you know, three minute take on what you're feeling in the world of crypto right now. What are you feeling out there? Um, how is it uh, impacting your decisions on Ledger's business? And, and what do you think happens next? It's true. I've traveled over like uh, South America, Europe, US, and Asia and Middle East. So actually, that's, uh, that was a lot of travel, all, all related to crypto, Bitcoin, Ledger. Um, and, uh, you know, you really feel that... Uh, you know, this is supposed to be a bear market, right? Uh, and uh, if you compare it to the last bear market that was in uh, 1819, uh, this really feels like the end of 19 and that we we're about to enter into 2020. So, um, but depend on where you are on the planet, like the picture is not exactly the same. So it feels right now that the party is between Singapore and Dubai. Like, you know, this is where... You have the biggest exchange on the planet. This is where the money is. You have Binance, which is still very strong, OKX, Bybit. These are the three biggest exchanges on the planet right now. They're all located in this part of the world between Singapore and, uh, and, and Dubai. And they're doing you know, really good in terms of revenue, even in this bear market. Uh, and so th they do revenues in the billions of dollars. And so that's very impressive, considering that we are supposed to be in a sort of almost all-time low or so very low in terms of trading. And so you have a lot of businesses that have shown like a lot of resilience during the bear market and are ready to scale in the, in the bull market. Like these guys have very big capacities. 
in terms of the teams that they have, in terms of the product that they're taking to market, etc. So I've been very impressed with the uh, uh, with how dynamic uh, the market is, you know, between Singapore and Dubai, if you want. Uh, I thought that the U.S. market is uh, uh, a little under the weather right now. Like, you know, it feels the party is in uh, Asia, basically, and that, you know, everybody is, uh, uh, is super sad in the U.S. But I think uh, it's, it's really because they, they, you know, people don't look at sort of what's happening and what's coming. I mean, they do look at it, but I, 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 don't, I, can, I cannot explain why people are, are so depressed. I mean, it's true that we've been in a, in the bear market for long, and it's true that the FTX story and Celsius, etc., have hit more uh, blood fire, have hit, have hit more the U.S. market than probably any other market. So there, there are reasons why people are sort of negative. But if you see the wave that is coming from BlackRock, Fidelity, Vanguard, and all of these guys, and what's in the making, and not in the making for the for two years. I mean, ETFs are, you know, will be approved or could be approved uh, sort of rather sooner than later, um, you can see that that in combination with having could be the trigger of the next of the next bull run. And so from my point of view, and you know, meaning with a lot of businesses, we also have an investment business with the ledger catafon, et cetera. So I'm seeing a lot of things now. And it, it feels that you know the market is really getting to temperature. Uh, and so I think we're in the phase where uh, it's not yet the bull market. Uh, I don't think it's the bear market anymore. I think we're in a transition phase between between the two. So it could stay flat like this for a few more months, maybe six, maybe nine. Like, you know, who knows? Like, you know, I, I don't have, a, of course, a date for, for when the bull market starts. But um, just like in every bull bear, and this is my third one, I think, or fourth one. I don't know. I've been since 2014, so so, so you, can, you can count. I think I, think I started just after the the Mongox incident. So I, I, I started during the bear market of the Mongox incident. Then, you know, I had the, um, every bull and bear after that, you know, this really feel like the end of a bear market and the, and the, and the beginning of the bull run, because a lot of companies have been building great stuff uh, during the, the bear market. I mean, you know, Coinbase has done really well in building stuff. The new L2 is actually a good, a great success, etc. Um, so you can see a lot of companies have actually done real stuff, and this is why we're taking Ledger Recover now. This is why we designing stacks, even though we like because the screen is, is is a hard one to make, but we have good hope that we will take uh, stacks to market sometime soon. Now, um, you know we've done all of this for the next bull market. You know, getting ready during the bear market and building during the bear market is really the name of the game when it comes to crypto. Um, and a lot of companies have done the same uh, during this bear market. So I think the you know infrastructure and companies are ready for the next bull, which is very important because if the bull comes and no one is ready, uh, then uh, you cannot capture the bull. Uh, and so I think there are a lot of companies in the space that have been resilient, bear market and bull market. You know, after every bear market, uh, like Ledger, but not just Ledger. I mean, you know, Coinbase, uh, Binance, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And so these companies will will grab most of what's coming, and I think what's coming is um, significantly bigger uh, than what was in the past. I mean, just to remember, the crypto is still relatively small. I mean, one trillion is not very big. Gold is still ten trillion, and you know, uh, stock market is much bigger than that. So, I think we're still a very small industry, uh, but we have built an infrastructure now to to scale for the next three years and then there will be another cycle and there will be another investment, et cetera, to, to grow because the kind of money that is coming in, this, in the game now is the money that this uh, industry has never seen before. And so it means a lot in terms of security. It means a lot in terms of infrastructure. It means a lot in terms of scalability. It means a lot in terms of systems, et cetera. And so, um, so I think this is what's happening now. I'm very bullish uh, more than ever, actually. This has been a long bear market, to be honest. Uh, it felt like longer because the businesses are at scale, but you see it actually that in this bear market, businesses lost business, but are still multi-billion dollar business when it comes to exchanges, hundreds of billion dollar business when it comes to a company like Ledger. So business didn't go to zero. Like the market you know, held uh, during this bear market, but the next uh, growth phase is gonna be insane. Thank you. That's great to great to hear from you on that. I appreciate the appreciate the insight. Thanks to both of you for coming on episode seventy seven. 
seems auspicious, the number, to talk about Recover. And uh, let's go. See you out there. Thanks, Ian. Thank you. This content is provided for informational purposes only and is the sole expression of our opinion and should not be relied upon as legal, business, investment, or tax advice. Do your own research. Any loss or profit is your sole responsibility. Stay safe.